Day 4. Mike and I go out again for lake trout, but this time we're targeting them in the deep water adjacent to the drop-offs. Using the countdown method, we were able to consistently locate and catch cruising lake trout. Uh, spring and fall is a little bit different for lake trout. The spring, uh, where we are here, the lake trout like to travel along these eskers where we have significant changes and drop-offs. So where it comes out to a nice flat, and sand flat especially, then it drops off significantly. And those trout will travel along that sort of like a corridor or a highway back and forth. Well, I think with the, way, the best way to set up for this with a fly rod, typically with conventional tackle, we'll troll along that shoreline and catch fish. But with a fly line, I think we'll set up and we're going to park ourselves on the sand where it's not too shallow or not too deep in, in the shallows. We're going to cast out into the darker water, right? And then we'll retrieve. So we'll let that sink. And as it sinks down, it'll get more or less to the angle of the contour of the, of the bottom. And as you strip, it should come up along that. We're also going to try a few along uh, parallel with the shoreline and when you retrieve then along it'll come along the shoreline and come along that contour. Well electronics they're important in uh, several several different ways. Obviously you're going to be watching along for contour differences, you're going to be watching for those elevation changes. You're also going to put, potentially and hopefully mark some fish as well. So good solid marks uh, are going to are going to show up. That's going to give you an indication that you're going to have some good fish where you're sitting. So what we're doing here is Mike has marked fish at 15 feet. We're anchored right on the edge of a drop off here. I'm using a Type 7 line that sinks at about two. It takes about two seconds to go a foot. I want to go 15 feet down, so I'm just multiplying that two seconds for a foot. So I want to go 15 times two is 30. Count that down with my watch and then just strip it back aggressively. Two foot pulls, ooh, got banged again. And just strip until they, oh, there was one following. This is good. So we've got a bit of a formula here. It's important to, with sinking lines, to get your flies down consistently where you want them. So once you hook a fish, you can repeat it rather than just casting out and hoping for the best. So we started at about Five to the hour on the minute hand here. So we're gonna go down to 25 past and then start stripping. There we go. Fish on. Slammed it right as we were coming up the drop off. And it, they've been, every cast I've been getting hits, but they've been, lake trout are famous for short striking and we were just contemplating putting a, a stinger on and then we finally latched on and hooked up. So every cast, we've been timing it down. The sounder, the electronics are critical to this because A, it helps you mark fish and where they're suspending in the water column. And then you can time your cast down to get to them. Got that big net because, not that this trout necessarily warrants it, but there are some monster lake trout in this lake. But these are a blast, and the take is solid. <laughs> There's no little subtle, was that or wasn't that a take. This is a, you strip, and all of a sudden it just goes hard, locks up, and goes the other direction fast. Steer them into the bucket. All right, let's look at the prize. Peel all the net in so he's got less net to swim around in. Grab him by the tail, the caudal peduncle, and there you go. Beautiful lake trout. A killer of mini minnows and bait fish. Okay, let's put him back. Speed induces the follow. And right as the fly is starting to ascend. Oh, I got bumped again. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Right at, right at the drop. So these fish are, as Mike pointed out, it's best to like, fish drop offs the same way as if you can try and get your 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 presentation on more of an acute angle or even parallel to the drop, because they're cruising this like a wall on the deep side, ambushing any bait fish that swims along the edge. 
There we go. Beautiful Scott Lake Lake Trout. Good eating size. Yeah. Day five. Polly and I head out to try our luck at our third primary presentation option for lake trout, river outlets. These river outlets provided cool, oxygenated water, concentrating both baitfish and lake trout. These presentation options also work well when chasing lake trout on other water bodies besides Scott Lake. There we go, fish on. There we go, lake trout on the fly. Just casting out in the current, letting it swing down, and then trying to bring it up the seam where the slow water here is, and the main current coming out. And just two, two foot aggressive strips, red and white whistler, and just socked it. What's also fun about these fish is they hit hard. There's no subtle grabs. Got that whistler right in the scissors. Little chewed up. Beautiful little lake trout. And let them go. So we're sitting here, we've got the falls coming out, the main current tongue, we're sitting in the slack water. So I'm gonna cast down and across into the current, a little downstream mend because we're sitting in the slow water, that's gonna help the line sink and swing down to about 45 degrees, let that fly and line get down, and an aggressive two foot strips because the lake trout are either hanging under the current or just on this slack water and we're fishing this little red and white whistler and they just plow it. So here we go. There we go, right out in the main current, which only accents the whole fight. Nice fish. So we're just quartering the cast down into the current. I'm sitting in the slow water, so I'm throwing a little downstream mend to help get that fly to sink using this fast sinking type seven integrated line with an intermediate running line and then just letting it swing along the seam and two foot aggressive strips with a red and white whistler and they just plow on it. This is good fun. There we go. Ooh. Look at that beautiful lake trout. Beautiful settings, got the falls coming in behind me. Beautiful vermiculations. All right, let's put them back. The fly line choices are pretty simple. You're gonna need a floating line, this works well for pike in shallow water, both top water and streamers. And in the fall, when the lake trout are up on the reefs prior to spawn, you can easily get to them with a floating line. The next line you want to consider is a fast sinking line for working off deep drop offs for lake trout. Something in the type six, type seven sink rate. Integrated lines work well that have different sink rates along their length, such as an intermediate running line and a fast sinking type six or seven head and then an intermediate line that you can use for targeting lake trout from an anchored position in shallow water, say 15 feet deep or less. An intermediate line also works well for pike on the shallows when they're a little dour and less likely to chase a fly, such as when an approaching weather system is coming in. Whenever you come to a fly-in destination such as Scott Lake Lodge, luggage limits are always an issue. Thankfully, you don't need to bring a lot of fly rods. An eight weight is gonna cover the majority of presentation challenges you're gonna face here for lake trout and trophy pike. But there are those situations where you wanna throw large wind resistant flies to get those explosive surface takes for pike or work fast sinking lines off drop offs and into deep holes for lake trout, then a nine or even a 10 weight is gonna be a welcome addition. <laughs> 